Well, you certainly know that uh, you've come to the right spot um, when you can't wait to get the colour down onto paper. Uh, so much so that I'm not even going to do any drawing today. I'm um, going straight on with the, uh, with the paint. And, um, well, there's the scene. Stand this side. There's the scene. Trees overhanging, lovely bit of depth. And as you can see, the light is coming through, breaking onto certain parts of this lovely little um, uh, coppice that leads down into Great Baddow. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. So let me take you through the painting process. Good, well I have all of the paper in shot today as you can see using my normal mop brush and my normal palette um, all freshened up you can see puddles of water laying around and I'm going to start by laying on um, a bit of the sky so I'm working from the top down going to use Windsor Blue for the sky with a touch of cobalt not too much just to soften it plenty of water in the mix so that's got to be fairly light, although obviously that does lighten up as it dries. Now as I come away from that main top edge, I'm just softening one or two areas so that the paint flows down. You're not going to see a great deal of the sky at all, but if you're going to leave some gaps, I always need to see some sort of sky. I'm putting a bit of red in there because any gaps I leave that red will complement the, um, the greens that, uh, that I lay in. See the way I'm laying that in very, very wet, keeping little puddles of paint forming. How far do I go down? Well, it's got to be blue. So I'm going to use ultramarine now in the lower area. And I'm going to use raw sienna with that. Now I'm having to hop up and down because fortunately they um, get a lot of biting of the uh, lovely little critters that uh, hang around this time of year. So but anyway that's the blue gone in. That's enough of my problems. Um, that's the blue for the distance. A little bit of yellowing for the dense area of now it's not the really light area as you can see and I'm going to now swing that up either side right so that swings up either side good nice little puddles of paint hanging right cadmium yellow to start some there's a lovely little branch hanging out there I don't want that to get that leave it too late before I put that in because if I do I make it too wet having said that but it goes right up into that sky that's the canopy that's good good so that's the tops of the trees that are in sunlight and what I'm going to do a little bit of a run back there so I'm just touching into that just to soften that to give us a sense of leafing on the top there we are that's fine that's brilliant right I'm adding winds of blue to that cadmium yellow to give me a slightly darker green this side well that's how it is anyway initially leaving one or two little darker touches and the same this side I'm going to go quite a bit darker if I can this side just before it dries 
there we go and notice how the reds are complementing the greens that that I laid on earlier um, or not laid on earlier but I'm laying on now and uh, right what else have we got right nice that's lovely good now in the far distance let's just I'm gonna have to mop off here so I'm just lifting off that bead of color there because in the far distance we have a lovely lemon yellow area and that sparkles in the light like that look at that so I'm laying in the lemon yellow to give that little bit of depth we've got lots of overhanging branches to come but another bit of lemon here that's just within that grasp of sunlight right so that's as far as we come up for that now we start a bit of the edging see what I mean by getting in just straight with the paint so much more rewarding uh, if you can not vital obviously a little bit of extra blue going in there in places just to ring the changes having to hop around a bit because as I said these little flies are causing me nothing but trouble right now there we go that's it still who cares when you're enjoying your painting we don't care about some flies right cadmium yellow Windsor blue I'm going to add burnt umber with that because I can spot some some very much darker um, tree-like areas there there's also another dark area just coming over here like that that's okay and what you think is dark when it dries it's considerably lighter which um, is one thing that you really need to think about but I'm just going to establish the um, the lovely bright path and that will be raw sienna with a touch of crimson in there that's my start and that leads right into the far distance I'm putting in the very light first that really lovely light and the crimson is the same color that I used in the sky so that's why it'll all marry up together then as I come forward more raw sienna and more crimson still keeping it light but gives a stronger sense of color quite a bit of red in the foreground there help when I come to paint shadows into that and then we just mix and match with all sorts of different uh, lights and darks really there we are uh, put a bit of raw sienna in as well that's always uh, a nice color to introduce into these woodland scenes wooded areas and leaving some little speckles of, of white paper too um, give sparkle um, quite often that is required um, in these sorts of subjects and lemon yellow again just to give that sense of light in places can always go darker it's more difficult to go lighter it's lifting off if you've got if you want to go lighter so um, it's always nice to get that crispness to start with uh, and then winds are blue again with raw sienna give me a quite a dark sort of foreground touch there just to fill up that foreground area I'm going to put a little bit in there but not quite as low down a little bit up there a little bit up there good now I'm going to tr change brush I'm going to change to a 
number six. Now with the number six, I'm putting raw sienna with Windsor Blue. And I'm just now, just before it dries, although having said that, it's probably dry, the looks of things, which, you know, that's the time of year. We are June, so we mustn't knock that at all. We do love uh, to get, uh, there we are, further down it's still a bit damp, which is good because in the lower area, that's where you need the softening because potentially they will appear further away. And this then spreads right the way across the canopy. It's a complete canopy there. That's it. And just going to just soften that a little. That's it. There we go. That's better. That's more or less going out of picture. Just flip it, little fly away. There we go. There we go. Now that's that's a distant tree. Then we come over to this side, and we still use the raw sienna, but we use the cadmium yellow with it, with a touch of Windsor blue, and a reasonable amount of Windsor, not too much at this stage, because this area is somewhat darker, but it's still pretty much in the distance. You know, it's not a real foreground color I'm looking for. There we are, and it tucks back. It hangs down a little more than that. May just bring that, don't want to completely stop the view into the distance. Then, Removing paint from the side of the brush. Now going to just introduce a little bit of this up in the higher canopy, the whole thing. Still maintaining a little bit of that uh, sky in the center. I think that's going to be important to this one. When you start picking up paint, just remember that you need to reload because now as I head down, I'm adding more blue with a touch of Indian red within that green. And you notice what that does. That gives me that real punch of dark. Just at that point. There we are. Nice to have a, just at the, you know, I've got to ring the changes here. Um, on the other side, we add lemon yellow to that mix. And all of a sudden we get a total different dark green. And this there again heads out towards that, that tree there and out into and gradually blends. Quite dark, will be some gaps, but you know, you work your way from back to forward to try and get the depth of color that you require. Um, judging that depth of colour is um, quite a quite a task. I will admit that, but uh, you know, unless you do it, you don't know. And that's the whole point of these sort of demonstrations. So you can uh, watch the way I do it and uh, put it down in your own way, because it's quite likely that you know. The way I do it is perhaps not quite the way you would want to do it, but um, that will totally depend on how you see things. There we go. Just putting out some little bits of branches that are there, and these overhang too. Don't want to go down too far with this. I'm getting a little bit excited now, which is not uh, which is not ideal. Just going to clean the brush off now and use the side of the brush to 
tent in some darker stuff a bit more a bit darker a bit of red gone in there there we are and this is the trees that are hanging over in the foreground oh yeah yeah we're getting those in now because we're right up the top and that's the strata of that tree so there's different varieties different strengths of green that all need to be painted and uh, and dropped in Isn't that temptation to paint? You know, if you're not inspired by these sorts of subjects, then probably um, these may not be your subjects. Uh, but I hope they are, because they're well worth the effort if you, um, if you spot them and really enjoy painting this sort of thing. Right, well there's lots of lights there, so that's good, um, because without lights we can't see the darks. There's another little band there, a slightly darker colour, but of course we're coming that down now into the more foreground area. So this is where we have to just be a little careful what we do, and I'm actually painting back to create tops of, of another little area of colour there. So it's all mixing and matching with the colours and at the moment I'm scratching as well because I'm getting bitten. But anyway, right, burnt umber going in with the Windsor Blue because we're looking for some really dark touches now. That's what I'm looking for that will gradually blend up into that canopy at the top because this is all part of more or less the foreground um, greenery gaps you leave you'll be able to put some put some trunking in really really dark now a bit of red in there uh, just to pick up some really dark colour. There is a little dark area there I noticed as well which may need softening. Well it will need softening but there you go. While I've got the colour on my paint might as well put it in and then there's sort of like ivy coloured trunk covered trunks there that will stand up quite nicely and now I can drag and soften that colour and that stands up there, that may very well stand there. Here we go. And before you know it, you've got yourself a lovely start to a rather interesting subject. Now I've decided to use a number six Rosemary & Co now to get the, the, the lovely textures within the grasses in this foreground here and it's still a little damp so that's a real bonus so I'm putting in all the light areas first a bit of red gone in there too there's some little touches here as well and that will all aid the composition and the perspective of, of the whole thing then I'm adding a little bit of yellow to that to get some to ch ring the changes a little bit we get some slightly darker stuff going in there it's just given an impression of all this undergrowth we go too far up there um, before we actually start putting in some trunk work bit of yellow too I've noticed so that's cadmium just flipping up picking up a bit of that paint there 
and if you pick up paint and then spread it about it can work or it can go pear shaped but at the moment it's uh, not looking bad at the moment and then I'm just going to hint at something going on a little bit further down the lane and right then finally with this dark colour again a bit more raw sienna not quite as dark as a couple of areas there I want to ring the changes as I say and uh, this will lay there there's going to be a tree coming out there somewhere so let's uh, make certain that we make use of that you know you've got to make use of what you see within these subjects may not be necessarily what's there you know exactly the same as what you see is there but a general general sort of feeling of the place that's that's what i'm trying to say you need just a general feeling of the whole place and if you can do that then you're halfway there now it's just the branches really now i've introduced burnt umber into that green that i've been using plus a little indian red too i think that more or less fits the um the actual look of the, the or the color of the tree that is going to stand there and it and it comes up like that it heads off out trees always look to find light so that's why trees in a woodland path like this quite often are um, heading in towards the light area you know in the center where there's very little uh, leafing now this one's going to be a little darker so i'm using a bit more blue in this a bit more red this one's going to be considerably darker let's put a dark passage in the low area of that now this one has some ivy running up so what i'm going to do and that splits there so that splits like that and then there's a bit of a break before it heads off out of picture and that heads off up there and then what i'm going to do there's ivy running there well i've already got the ivy colored color there so all i'm going to do is to um, improve on that make it look as if the trunk is broken with the ivy color i think that makes sense Hopefully it will. Oh well. Hey ho, we'll see how that one goes shortly. Um, and while we've got this dark colour, there isn't so like a branch that heads off up there and then it cuts off through there. Um, another branch there. I always put these branches in the lower part and we're going to make that a bit wider. That's quite a chunky looking tree, that one. Okay, now this side we're adding raw sienna to that because that will lighten it. It's the only reason for that. And we've got a trunk coming out there, and another trunk coming out there, and that's sliding up towards the canopy, like that, breaking up. Another branch there use the rigger shortly because um, and I'm just going to add a little more blue I'm going to keep it dark but make it blue because I can see another smaller trunk there that really needs to be just put in and then softened there we are that gives an added feel and added depth to that particular area okay okay well i can see a couple of figures so i think what i'll do i'll put those in as they come along um let's put in the faces for a start 
Just got to get the scale correct. That's the key to it. As they come towards us. And uh, one slightly in a grey green. So let's see if we can pick that colour up with the um, with this paint. There we go. Could be in shadow. Probably are in shadow. And that's good. And the other one, a bit of red perhaps. Shall we go with a bit of red? Too much there. Just lift off a bit of paint. There we go. And we're going to then put in a bit of flesh colour. But they are in shadow, so. And then we'll put in a dog. We'll have a little dog of some sort. Like that. I think that's roughly a dog. I think that can be classed as a dog. Right you are. Now we're in to more or less the shadow work and finishing touches. Well to start the finishing touches I'm putting in some really dark um, greens just to pick up a sense of uh, just to start the shadow work really. Um, burnt umber, winds of blue, a little bit of red in there because that all goes green brown which is what I'm looking for and quite dark. Let me show you what I mean and you'll notice what this does to the look of the whole thing. It really does throw everything into perspective. Immediately you put that on. Don't get don't remove all of the light all of the lighter greens. That's the worst thing we can do. But we do need some punch into some of this greenery. And there you go. Look at that. And we do a little bit with the other side. Put a little bit more yellow with that for the other side. Just to give it a slightly different flavour. But basically it's a similar approach. And as that hangs out, really keep that nice and dark. Don't get rid of all of the dark, all of the light shades. Because if you do, you lose the feel of total shadow really that's it I think that's probably sufficient maybe some little touches there got to be careful don't want to overdo you know you want to balance but you don't want to overbalance the whole thing and uh, I think that's uh, a good term um, overbalance right now we're going in with some nice add lemon yellow or cadmium lemon to that because I can see there's some lovely little crisp areas and the only way we'll see those crisp areas is if we add some darker touches around that trunk area. There we are, that's it. Same here, that's what I'm looking for. See the way it's textured the whole foreground up. Really gives a nice little sense of texture to that. And we can add more blue now because I want to show a little bit of that texture standing up in this right hand side. There like that. And there are one or two little overhanging bits and bobs there. I suppose they're ferns of some sort. Good. It's just shadow time. My favourite part of the painting. 
Now for the shadows, I'm going to use Windsor Blue, you could use Prussian Blue, and Cadmium Red. Now, I'm going to start off with the darker colour first. Normally do the lighter colour, as you probably know, but I'm starting off with the darker shading. Because I want to do the lighter stuff as we go into the distance. So there's a lovely dark shadow that's sweeping down across there. And don't be afraid to put in the dark stuff. You know, a lot of people think that it's too much. I don't think it is. I, I, I'm very much a person that loves to put in atmospheric shadows. And then as it goes away, it gets more dappled. So you open the shadow up a touch. There we are. Now that gives, to me, gives it a real sense of life. And then finally, Windsor Blue and quite a bit of red because this is where the punch comes in nice and dark if you don't put dark in you can't see the lights that's why I've even gone darker Now, clean the brush and just soften it with a damp brush. Drag the paint up. Drag that colour up. Soften it. Throw water at it if you, if you really want to. Get that uh, out of the way. There we are. So as it, once you throw water at it, it softens. And then you can then put a bit of shadow work under there and gently now teasing in some shadows, a bit darker than that, into this distant area. See where well, I'm putting it a little bit of shadow work there, a little bit there, a little bit there, just so as we can see that there is some shadowing around where those figures are and away into the distance and just soften that then with the finger, adding texture. Yeah, I'm almost painting with my finger there. Look at that. Yep, I think that pretty much does it now. Let's allow that to dry before we sign it in one of the corners. Well, as you can see, I've taken the surround away or the tape off and now it just wants signing in the paint that I used. So it's a mixture of all the different paints I used and I'm going to sign it down in this bottom right hand corner with my rigger. There we are, Colin Steed. Brilliant. Quite pleased with that one. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
click the link bottom right hand corner you'll receive notifications when I upload more videos.